Hi, and welcome to another episode of Neighborhood Photographer right here on Visual Art Photography Tutorials. And we are definitely in the neighborhood today because we're right in our homes for an indoor project today, a macro photography project, an abstract photography project as we take a spring. Now, in my case, I'm using a spring from a pen, which I'm sure you can barely see here, but as you can see to my left, your right, you can do all kinds of things with a spring when you're close up and when you're using different apertures, different focusing points, that kind of thing. You don't have to use a spring from a pen, but our project is a spring as we spring into spring today. So what are some of the things you're going to need for the project today? Well, you're going to need that macro lens unless your spring is really, really big. Uh, you're also going to need a piece of black plexiglass, something like this. All right. Now, this isn't a very big piece. You don't necessarily have to use it. Uh, maybe something else that's highly reflective will work just as well. I really don't know. I'm, I've been using this black plexiglass. Now, the thing with this is lint and dust wants to collect on it very quickly. So you have to be very, very careful to keep the surface clean when you're doing uh, your photography. Okay. A tripod obviously really helps for something like this and moving the angle of your camera using different focus points, using different apertures. It all comes into play and I'm going to go through it with you step by step so that you can come up with something that's your own and something that's really, really interesting. As usual, comments and questions can be addressed down below. It's abstract photography, macro style, and we're shooting a spring today. Here's the lighting setup that I'm using for this particular project, both coming in from opposite directions, just to give a lot of brightness and a lot of clarity uh, to the spring. Take a look down and you'll see two poster boards there. We're going to use those. Uh, from time to time. One pink, one green, just to add a little bit of color uh, to the subject, if you like that kind of thing. All right, as we look at the spring on the black plexiglass, be careful that you clean it so that there isn't dust and lint on there, as there is on this one. I have to actually lift that spring off and clean the surface to make the job a lot cleaner and a lot easier. So here's your basic surface. You've got your spring and it's facing on an angle. As we work it, start working it, in the first image you can see how that black plexiglass works as a great reflector for this spring. And the color is coming from one of those poster boards that I was showing you, the pink poster board. And I've held the poster board close to the spring. The spring is reflecting the color and you get this kind of a, an effect. Now here, what I've done is I've taken this image here. And you can see where everything is, it looks normal, but because I'm really trying to get something abstract, something that you, you look at and you're not quite sure what it is, I've cropped it and I've turned it on its side a little bit. And now it, it looks kind of strange. Like you really can't get your eye on this because it's not normal to see something, to see a reflection of something, uh, to see a reflection to the side of something. So that abstracts it just a little bit more. But if you really want to go full circle, what you can do is turn the image upside down, which is what I've done here. And it looks completely different. And now it's really difficult to understand what this is. And it becomes very, very abstract. Now, aperture f 2.8. For all of my images, I've been using an aperture of f 2.8 to f 8. Nothing deeper than that, except for one image, and I'll show you that later. I did not want to have a big a depth of field for any of these images, because if I did that, then you would be able to identify it perhaps a little more clearly, and it just didn't look right. I like having that flow. It almost gives it a flow. The, the shallow depth of field gives it a flow. It almost looks like it's in motion. It almost looks like the front of the ring it's, it's like one ring and then you've got time-lapse photography or, or perhaps it's in motion and you're capturing it over the course of a few seconds or something. It's like that. It gives it action. This is the only image that I shot with a small aperture of 
F6, uh, F-16. And the reason I, d- I did more than that too, by the way, I shot this one. I also focus stacked it. Now, if you don't know how to do focus stacking and it's something you're interested in, I did a, a video on that and I can put it up there for you. But here, the plane has been tilted again. I've taken that my camera and I've turned it on its side so that the actual plexiglass is tilted diagonally in the viewfinder, all right? And you can see the line right there. Okay, there's the line. And the left-hand side here is what's above and below is the reflection, all right, in the plexiglass. But I've turned it on its side, so again, it's really hard to identify. You might look at this and say it's a spring, but then it looks kind of weird. Abstract. Okay, back to a shallow depth of field. I took this one also at F16 and I didn't care for it. It just became too identifiable. Here, I'm using some green poster board. The aperture is F2.8, shallow depth of field. Only parts are in focus and of course, a lot of it's out of focus and it just adds to that abstract effect that I was looking for. Here, again, here's that. It looks like something just like move, like a freight train moving into your view as the front, the front, the front ring, the first one, is mostly sharp, and then everything else falls off as the depth of field is very shallow. Again, f2.8 with my macro lens. And again, it has that time-lapse effect or a motion type effect. It looks like it's coming in from the right-hand side and, and, and moving across. That's the effect I was looking for. Now, you may be looking for something completely different, and maybe you like to use f16 or f 22. That's totally up to you. It depends on what you're looking for. Here's an image that I turned on its side. Originally, it looked like that. All right. But I wanted something that had a little bit more, something more dynamic for me. And this is the one that I ended up printing, or is one of the ones that I ended up printing. And I kind of like it. It looks like it's sliding down. It looks, again, it's that motion thing, right? It looks like it's coming in from the top of the image and, and coming at you. And that's just from turning it on its side. That's just all I did there to create that. Okay, so now we're going to shoot the spring head on. All right, we've taken it off the angle and we're looking straight at it. And notice, see those dust particles there? You ought to be careful about that. I mentioned that off the top of the show. You want to make sure that you have as few of those as possible. Oh, the other thing too, by the way, is because the surface is black and uh, it's going to fool, try to fool your camera meter, okay? So I was underexposing each image by somewhere between minus two and minus three stops to come up with the correct exposure. Straight on. Shallow depth of field, f2.8. Again, when you look at that, you're not quite sure what it is. You want to even take it to another level, take another step, turn it on its side. Because something completely different again. Here, F4 is the aperture. But what I've done here is I've taken it completely out of focus. It's just completely out of focus, all right? And it looks kind of like a vase or something like that, but it's completely out of focus something extremely, extremely abstract. There's no way you'd look at that and know that that was a spring. Straight on again. So whether you decide to go the black and white route, or maybe you want to introduce a little bit of color into your images just for something a little bit different. Hey, listen, you can do a lot with a spring or with any other objects that you can think of. It can be a lot of fun. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you it's not what you see, It's how you see it. And I will definitely see you soon.